Hello and welcome to my new sewing workspace. I'm posting this video for anybody else who needs guidance on how to set up a place to sew or any other hobby as I did when I started this process. I want to learn to quilt, but I first need to learn to sew and I needed a decent space to do that in. After watching a lot of YouTube videos, including sewing room tours and craft room tours, I came up with this setup because I thought it was the most versatile and practical for my space, which is a den-like room off of our master bedroom. I also wanted to be able to break it down and store it under the eaves through that small door. I didn't want anything permanent, at least not for now. After all of my research, I decided to use lifetime foldable adjustable tables. Now these tables come in many variations, including ones that fold in half. This one's commercial grade that's rated to hold up to a thousand pounds. I haven't tested it, but these are sturdy tables and that's what I needed to hold my sewing machine or anything else that I wanted to place on top. The table is foldable because when you break it down, the legs fold up into the tabletop and it adjusts up to 36 inches and includes a one hand mechanism that makes it easy to raise and lower it. That's a nice feature. My setup includes three separate tables measuring two feet by four feet or 24 inches by 48 inches each. The way I configured it is I placed one widthwise in front of the window and the other two lengthwise. And butted up against each other, it creates a workspace of six feet by four feet or 72 inches by 48 inches. The best price I could find for these tables was $56 a piece from Sam's Club, so I ordered them online for free shipping, and when I received them, I painted them with a light blue chalk paint just to make them look better. Sam's used to have the six-foot version available, which I probably would have preferred two of them because it would have given me more open space for my sewing supplies underneath. I'm dealing with two extra legs now. In the end, these are more practical because they'll be easier to break down and store in my small space. When you butt the tables together, you will have gaps and the tabletop material can cause static electricity. So my solution was yoga mats and I like these because they're thick, they're sticky, so they'll hold in place things like cutting mats and relatively inexpensive. I found these $26 a piece on Amazon. There's two, one runs on this side of the table, the other one runs on that side of the table. I purchased this wide ironing board and cover online from Target because it fit the space perfectly. It's wider, it's shorter, it's only 48 inches, which is the exact width of my table, and it raises higher than a normal ironing board. And then I purchased the iron from Amazon. It's a Panasonic cordless. It comes in other colors like red, blue, even rose gold, but those are more expensive, so I opted just to purchase the basic model. The cutting mats from Amazon by US Art Supply and it's listed as 48 inches by 36 inches. The working grid is only 34 inches by 46 inches and people have complained on Amazon in the comment section to this product that that's misleading, but it works perfectly for me. It fits half of the table. I only ordered one to make sure that I liked it. I do, so I ordered a second one, and when it arrives, I will place it on the second half of the table. I also like that it's double-sided. Also from Amazon is this drafting chair by Flash Furniture. It's height adjustable and has a swivel tractor seat that's very comfortable. When I received it, it had a cracked foot, so I just contacted the manufacturer. Their information was available on Amazon's website, and within a few days, I received a new foot and it was easy to replace. I grew up watching my mother sew, and she's the one I turned to when I needed a recommendation for what sewing machine to buy, and she said Singer. I initially wanted a simple, mechanical, heavy-duty machine, but those weren't available because people had bought them up to make masks, and that's a good thing. This particular model was still available on the Singer's website. It was on sale, and I had a 15% coupon code, 
So in the end, I got a good deal on it, and it turns out that it's going to be a very good machine to learn to sew and quilt, because one of the steps of quilting is making a label. Many people use permanent marker to write on their labels, but I don't have neat handwriting. Luckily, this machine has an embroidery function, and I will be able to stitch my labels with whatever information I want to include. I just have a spool of black all-purpose thread by Coates so that I can practice my straight stitch and all the other stitches and functions of my machine. The lamps behind my machine are by Otlight and I purchased them directly from the manufacturer because they were on sale and yes, I had a coupon code. The one attached to the table is a Perform clasp light, doesn't take up any room. And then the smaller one is a desk lamp. I like it because I can move it around where I need light. It also has a USB port so that I can charge my devices, including an iPad, which is nice to have if I need to look up anything. As a beginner, I still don't know what the feet that came with my machine are called or what they do. So I purchased a set of containers and my plan is to label each compartment for each foot. And as I learn how to use them, I'll know which one to grab. Once I'm comfortable with sewing, then it's time to start on my first quilt. And I already know which one that will be. There's a channel on YouTube by Fat Quarter Shop and the owner, Kimberly Jolly, has created a beginner quilt video series. I chose this because each video focuses on one block of the quilt and each block focuses on a new skill. So I thought this would be a great way to start my quilt making journey. I just downloaded the pattern, figured out what fabric I needed to complete the quilt. I'm a little nervous, but I'm confident that I can do it. If you're interested in sewing or quilting and like me, don't know how, other channels that I have found helpful and inspirational are Melanie Ham, My Sewing Room, Sewing Report, Jordan Fabrics, Just Get It Done Quilts, Fat Quarter Shop, you gotta check them out, and so many more. The community is very helpful and inspirational. All you have to do is run a search and I'm sure you'll find what you need. And this is my final workspace. The second cutting mat finally arrived and I placed it on the second half of the table and both of them together fit perfectly. This is the most versatile and practical setup for me I can lower one of the tables, I can lower all of the tables, I can even move it around into a U-shape. But most importantly, I'm able to break it down and store it away, in my case, under the eaves in a small space through a small door. I hope this has helped give you some tips, some ideas, some guidance on how to set up a work table for your space. It's good for more than just sewing or quilting it would be good for any hobby or any project. And remember, as I mentioned, these tables come in various sizes. So whatever works in your space, I hope this helps you find it. Thank you for watching and have a great day.